Yes, my dear friends, may we start our today's lesson? Are you ready? Are you waiting for the lesson with your exercise book and a pen? And if you don't have an exercise book and a pen around right at this moment, don't worry, you may watch this video as many times as you want to. Okay? All right. So today we are going to learn seven simple English single word expressions. All right, here you see the meanings, and here I shall write down the single word expressions. And the single word expressions will obviously boost your vocabulary up. I assure you, my dear friends. All right, uh, look at the first one. An entrance hall of a theater, cinema, or hotel. So when you get into a cinema, or a theater, or even a hotel, you see, there is an entrance hall where uh, at a cinema you see that uh, there are some stalls selling foodstuffs and uh, in a hotel you will see there is a, a lounge where you may sit or just outside the lounge there is some space there. So what is the single word for that? The single word if you know, tell me please. Write down in the comment box. If you don't know, there is no problem. I'm going to give you the word now. And the word is foyer. F O Y E R. Let me write here. F O Y E R. The word is foyer. But remember, this last letter R is not pronounced. So by mistake also, do not say foyer, do not say that, say foyer, all right, it's a French word actually, but widely used in English, and there is no English counterpart uh, for this word, and for that reason only, we have to learn this word only, foyer, the pronunciation is foyer, quickly make a sentence, example sentence, uh, I was waiting for my friend in the foyer, I was, wait, I was I telephoned my friend, um, hello, where is your late? Okay, all right, I'm waiting for you in the foyer. Come and meet me, all right? Move on to the second one. A collection of wild animals for exhibition. For exhibition, a uh, lot of uh, wild animals are collected somewhere. Okay, what is that collection called? What is that place called? That place is called Menagerie. Menagerie, let me write down the word here. In in a g e r i e the pronunciation is menagerie menagerie all right make an example sentence uh, he added a giraffe to his menagerie he has a manager. Manager is generally a manager is owned by a, a private individual, okay, by an individual, not by the government. So this is the difference between a zoo and a manager. A zoo is generally uh, under the government control, whereas a manager is under the private ownership. This is the difference. All right, move on to number three. The deliberate giving of false evidence while under oath. You've gone to a court in order to uh, give your evidence, but when you are under oath, you know oath, O A T H, oath. Oath means to swearing. So you have sworn uh, with your hand placed on the religious book that whatever you will speak is true and nothing other than the truth. All right? So you are under oath. Now you are giving your evidence, but you are giving false evidence and that also deliberately intentionally you are giving uh, false evidence so what is that called the deliberate giving of false evidence while under oath that's a crime of course you will be penalized for that the word is parjury parjury let me write the word here p e r J U R Y Parjury Parjury 
All right, the pronunciation of this word is parjuri. So let's uh, quickly make an example sentence. Uh, he has been accused of parjuri and penalized. He has been accused of parjuri and penalized. He's penalized. So I've already told you that parjuri is a, a cognizable offense. So if you uh, are accused of parjuri, you will be punished. Why parjuri is a uh, is a kind of crime because it is deliberate, intentional, giving of false evidence while under oath. All right, move on to number four. A person helping a touring band of musicians with their equipment. So musicians sometimes uh, move from place to place in order to uh, stage their programs, and uh, when they move with their uh, instruments, musical instruments are there with them, with their equipment, they're moving from one place to another place. There is an assistant who generally helps them. A person helping a touring band, traveling band, of musicians with their equipment. If you say instruments, all right, instruments, you have to of course uh, use the plural uh, form of the word instrument because uh, not only one instrument they carry, they carry more than one instrument. So very naturally, I think that uh, your curiosity is a little ignited now uh, as to why AC is not added to equipment. My dear friends, AC cannot be added to the word equipment, like information. We cannot say informations. In the same way, we cannot say equipments. Or it is always equipment. That's a common mistake made by the Indian students. So let me write the word here. What is the single word for? If you know the word, you write down in the comment box. If you don't know the word, write down in your exercise book. I'm writing here on the whiteboard. I'm spelling the word out very loudly. The word is R O A D I E. Rodi. Rodi. The word is Rodi. Rodi, no? Rodi. So Rodi is a word which means a person helping a touring band of musicians with their equipment. Let's make a uh, quick example sentence. The example, the example sentence uh, maybe uh, he has worked uh, for five years as a, a Rodi. He has worked for five years as a Rodi. All right, let us move on to number five. And number five is a person who spreads alarming rumors. Spreading rumors and then also alarming rumors. Not normal, not common, ordinary uh, gossip. It's just very alarming. The rumor that he is spreading is very, very alarming. So, what is that person called? The person who does it. The person who does it is called a scaremonger. Scaremonger. Let me write down the word. Is C A R E M O N G E R A scaremonger. There are two different words. This word is a single word, scaremonger. Scaremonger means a person who spreads alarming rumors. Say, for example, uh, a person is suddenly saying that uh, in the neighboring locality there is a communal riot. Whereas there is nothing of that sort. Perhaps uh, he has seen a loud quarrel between two people and he has started spreading this alarming rumor that there is a, a communal disharmonic, a communal riot in the neighboring locality. All right? So he is a scaremonger. Example sentence, any example sentence you want. So it is a common noun. So when you are using this word, you have to use a or an article before that. For example, don't believe in what he says. He is a scaremonger or he is a habitual scaremonger. Habitual scaremonger. All right, let's move on to number six. Number six is any disease or condition of unknown cause or that arises spontaneously. 
there are some diseases uh, which have no specific cause. Doctors do not find any specific cause. Uh, but the disease, of course, has its symptoms and uh, a patient is suffering from that disease and for that reason the patient is uh, undergoing different tests, a battery of tests, but still no cause is found. So this disease has arisen spontaneously on its own. So what is that particular uh, disease called? Any disease or condition of unknown cause or that arises spontaneously. The word is, single word is idiopathy. Let me write down the word. It's a medical word actually, but still in our daily common life we use the word idiopathy i p i o p a t h y p a t h y idiopathy idiopathy so that is a noun and if you want to use the adjective form you have to say idiopathic idiopathic uh, for example uh, say you have been uh, suffering from constipation or diarrhea and for which uh, you have undergone different tests such as uh, endoscopy, uh, colonoscopy, but the doctor, uh, your, consult, your, your doctor whom you consult uh, has found no cause, no specific cause. Then he writes down in the prescription idiopathy or idiopathic constipation or idiopathic diarrhea. So this way, uh, you can make, make any sentence you like. I think you have been able to understand what I uh, mean actually. If you fail to understand what I mean, write down in the comment box. And uh, if you are a student of science, you must be able to understand this word. Perhaps you have already uh, come to know this word from some book. Maybe if you know that, if you have already uh, heard of the word or you have already come to learn the word, please write down in the comment box. Let's move on to number seven, and number seven is going to be the last one for this video session, okay? Number seven, a lodging. A lodging, a place where uh, people stay. A lodging. Stay, of course, not permanently, but uh, temporarily. A lodging for travelers, especially kept by a religious order. Actually, in India, uh, especially in Bengal, we call it Dharmushala. But in India, it is uh, called Dhamsala. So in English, what is it called? That's the question. In English, it is called Hospice. Let me write down the word. H O S P I C E. Hospice. Okay? The word is Hospice. But nowadays, okay, let's first make an example sentence. Um, they went to, um, they, they went to uh, Benaras and uh, stayed there for three days at a hospice, at a hospice, okay, not at any hotel. Well, nowadays, let me tell you the present modern meaning of the word hospice. In America, why did this word is used to mean a place or a shelter uh, for the patients who are suffering from terminal disease. The patients who are going to die very soon or very shortly. So they generally stay at a hospice. There is some medical facility, uh, especially the symptoms are, uh, the, the, the doctors there, uh, I mean, treat the patient symptomatically, okay? They know that it is not possible for them to cure the disease. So. Uh, they symptomatically treat the patient so long as he or she does not die. So they are in that sense now it is the word hospice is used. I have told you the modern meaning because you, have, uh, you watch a lot of videos on YouTube, you uh, read a lot of articles on uh, Google. So if you come across this word hospice in the modern sense it is used, then it means this. Okay. So today we have learned seven words. Foy, number one is foy. Pronunciation once again, I would like to remind you. Foy. Number two, menagerie. Menagerie. Number three, parjury. Parjury. Number four, rodi. Rodi. Number five, scaremonger. 
It's a single word. Do not write scare and monger separately. Scare monger. Number six, idiopathy. Number seven, hospice. So these seven words you add to your vocabulary now and start using these uh, seven words um, as and when you get the right opportunity. All right. I'm not going to prolong the video. I have tried my best to uh, make the video short. I don't know whether I have been successful or not. Uh, you will tell me. All right. Thank you very much. See you again in the next video session. Bye-bye. For six days?